Hello there, it's Sev here from Three Counties Motorhomes and welcome to the video guide for the Power Part Seattle control panel that you see here. This is typically found in Bailey Motorhomes is where I've seen it most commonly, but it of course can be in other brands and manufacturers vehicles as well. So we're going to show you what the control panel does and its functionality and the different screens and bits of information you can access. So operating the panel is very easy. We have a power button here, two arrow buttons that will allow you to cycle pages of information and interact with different settings. Same for an enter or select button here. And then we have three toggle buttons. These will turn on your water pump, your lights and an outside awning light. Now, the power button here will turn on what is known as the master. As you can see there, it says master off. And if I turn on again, it says master on. Master is just your 12 volt circuit, your 12 volt system. Pressing your toggle buttons here will actually do the same. For example, if I turn the water pump on, it now says pump on and master on at the same time. Uh, the same could be done with the lights as well. If I press there, it says master on and lights on. So uh, you can just bypass pressing the power button by immediately turning something on here. It's also worth noting if I turn off the lights here, turn off the panel, turn on the panel again, you can see the lights have remained off. If I turn the panel off or the master off, should I say, with the lights still on, when I turn the panel back on, the lights come back on. So these do remember whether they were on or off accordingly. So on with the screens of information. So the first screen here is gonna have the time and then any other little symbols up here. This symbol at the moment is a little plug. Uh, this shows that we're plugged into mains electricity. You may see a picture of a battery, uh, sometimes with a V in it and an underscore underneath that means that you have a low battery voltage. And you can also see what looks like a symbol for a beaker or water container with an arrow underneath it that is, or pointing down, should I say, uh, that is indicating a low tank level. Okay, so those are some other supporting symbols you can get. You can go up or down through the information. It's entirely up to you. So if we go up, you can see we get the leisure battery voltage here. We then get the leisure battery amps. Now it's worth noting, this is only going to show the negative value. So what I mean by that is if we're putting energy in, which would be a positive number here, it would be plus X amount of amps, it won't show that. Um, if we're draining the battery though, it would show a negative amount of amps. So it should be minus two amps or whatever we're, we're, we're drawing from the battery. If this says two amps, that is the equivalent of minus two. At the moment it's showing zero, but as you can see here on the voltage, we're clearly charging the battery because that's a charging voltage there, but yet we're showing no energy going into the battery. And that's just because it will not show a positive number. It won't show energy going in. This is actually the drain. So this should actually be labeled leisure battery drain. And then you know that whatever number here you're seeing is the drain on the battery, but there we go. So positive numbers are just a zero, negative numbers will show on here. Continuing, we can select the battery and we change that by pressing the enter button. Now, sometimes this doesn't work, especially if you're plugged into mains electricity. To be honest, not really any reason to play around with this. Switching to the vehicle battery should only be done for charging. Um, and uh, nine times out of 10, people do forget to switch back. You should never run your motorhome on the vehicle battery. So no real reason to play around with that. We then have internal temperature. We can go to some user settings here where we can change uh, some simple settings and alarms and all those kind of things. Uh, and then we can come down to the exit menu to get back out. We then see the waste tank level, the freshwater tank level. And then in this particular vehicle's instance, we are running the heating and hot water through this panel as well. So there's not a separate control panel for those things. Now, if you don't have that, uh, these two options, that's absolutely fine. You may have a separate standalone controller for your heating and hot water system. So the next stage of the video is going to be me explaining these two sections here. Um, but otherwise, that is pretty much it for the control panel. So with the settings for water heating and space heating, very simple and easy to use. If we, uh, so you'll see it, if it's off, it will look like this. If you press the enter, it will turn it on. But if you want to actually configure the settings, press and hold the enter button. And the first thing that's gonna flash is the energy selection here. So now we use the up or down arrows to select. Now wavy lines are mains electric. So this is low electric power. 
That would be medium electric power, and that would be high electric power. Then we have a mixture of gas and medium electric, gas on its own, and then we have just a ventilation option there that's just going to turn the fan on just to circulate ambient air, which can be nice on a hot, still day. And then we're back to the low electric options. Once you press the enter to confirm that, you can then choose your target temperature, press the enter button, and hey presto, the system's on. It's as simple as that. And to turn it off, just press the enter button. Easy. Water heater works in very much the same way. Press and hold to set the energy selection. So we have low electric or medium electric. We then have gas and medium electric. We have gas and low electric, gas only, and then we're back to the electric only options. Press the button to confirm and that's it. You won't see anything else here for temperature. You just choose the energy selection and it's on, simple as that. And to turn it off, press the enter button again till you see it says off. And that's how you operate your heating or hot water through the control panel. So there we go, that about concludes the video for the Seattle control panel. I hope it was useful for you. Of course, please do bear in mind that there may be some subtle differences with this panel, how it's implemented in your particular vehicle, but hopefully this video has helped you understand how to use the panel in general. I'm Sev and thank you very much for watching.